Hi, Carl. Nice to see you. Um, I want to get straight into that incredible game at the weekend, really, because yeah. that was quite timely for you. It felt as though you were outstanding. The England manager saw it and, and, and it persuaded him to, 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 to pull you in. Um, talk to me about that penalty in the 95th minute. <laughs> Um, a young man with huge weight of pressure on his shoulders. What was going through your mind? Uh, when I seen the ref give the penalty, I just thought, it's like it's my time. I spoke to Raz. He said, what, what's happening? I said, I want to take it. He was like, it's fine. And then when I put the ball down, I just tried to focus on a spot and put it there. Did you block everything out? Did you feel pressure? Did you feel nerves? Um, I w not really, to be honest. No? But I felt like I was waiting for a while. And obviously, I did think about my old club and stuff, but after that, not really. Doesn't that seem extraordinary to you that you're, you know, a young man and, and a game like that that had gone as it had in injury time, and you're the man who can earn your team a point or not against your old club? Yeah, obviously, it was a crazy game. I did feel a bit nervous before the game, and a bit weird to see everyone. The club I've been at for 15 years, but when the game started, it felt normal and. And yeah, it was a, it was a good game. It's, it's a lot of what the manager has talked about, though, in, in, here in England, about your composure and your, your maturity. Yeah. Does that just come naturally to you? Yeah, I think so. I just always try to stay relaxed and stuff and just try and do my stuff on the pitch. Thank you, mate. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, you got the news um, after that match that you'd been called up. Yeah. Um, and I don't think you believed it. Tell us what happened and what it was like telling your family? Yeah, I got a message after the match, probably af around, and then off straight away actually after the match, but my phone was like going crazy because I've got some City fans that have mates and family and all that. So then I read it, and then like, I read it again, so then it was, it was confirmed. So yeah, and then I just rang my dad straight away, and my dad was with my mum, so, so yeah, I told them first. We've just heard about the penalty taking, um, and I know that you were very much influenced by a player who won a cup final at Staley Bridge, who was your dad. <laughs> um, has he been your hero? T tell us, for the people that don't know, how much work he did with you. As What was it, from three in that park in Withenshaw? Yeah, obviously, without my dad, I probably wouldn't be um, a footballer. Yeah, he'd done numerous hours with me every night, working with me to try and make me a professional footballer and yeah, uh, just trying to repay him as, as much as I can. And what was his reaction and your mum's reaction when you told them? Because your mum banned you from playing in the garden, right? Because you ruined the grass. Yeah. <laughs> I was breaking the pipes, but it's all right. Uh, yeah, they were just buzzing, to be honest. It was a proud moment for me and my family when I got the text and I rang them and told them. And yeah, it was just... It was just all buzzing. Thank you. Hi, Carl. Hi, um, can you talk me through the last 12 months? It's been probably by far away the best of your career. Won the, the Euros with the under-21s mm. and a big money summer move to Chelsea and now in the England senior squad. Can you just t talk me through it? What's it been like for you? Yeah, it's been crazy. The changes all happened so fast from winning the Euros to signing for Chelsea. And then getting called up here, it's all happened so fast, but yeah, I'm just excited for it all. You seem like someone that backs yourself, makes the decision. Not many players would want to leave Manchester City and then going to Chelsea and wanting to go and play. Where does that come from, that, that self-belief? I don't know, to be honest. Um, I think I've always like tried to believe in myself without being over the top. Like being, It's got to always be humble with it, but... I think just believing your own ability is going to help you a lot. So, yeah. And in the game, there's a, a clip that's gone viral of you leaning over to listen to your old teammates' team talk. Did you actually, were you able to hear anything? No, I didn't hear anything. I was just having a laugh, to be honest. I think Earl, Erlin found it pretty funny. I don't think the others did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, on, on social media, I'm sure you see it. Whenever you do something uh, well on the pitch, a, a video gets posted of you yeah. rapping along to... The Clark song by Vibes Cartel. Can you, can you tell us the story behind that? Me and my sister was in the house one day and it was like a TikTok trend going around. People were singing songs and stuff. And then my sister said, come sing this song. So I was like, I was like, all right, we'll do it. And then 
because all my boots has the St. Kitts flag and the England flag. My sister wanted to make sure the St. Kitts flag got in and then she posted it and it was it stayed quiet for a while to be fair. And then one t like one day I just see it everywhere and now I just, I just can't stop seeing it. <laughs> can't escape it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. Do Faye and Dan and then we'll come back to John Murray. Thanks. Hi, Carl. Nice to see you. Hi. Congratulations Thank as you. well. I mean, what what a few weeks it's it's been for you. But obviously, you know, you're in front of the media now, and this is a a big thing. But you've yeah. known for a long time what what you can bring to the party. Why do you think Gareth Southgate called you up to the squad? I don't know. Probably my form over the past few weeks since I moved to Chelsea. So yeah. But what in particular about your game is gonna is gonna suit this England squad? What what can you imp what impact can you bring? Try and bring the best impact I can possibly bring. If that's creating chances and scoring, then hopefully it'll be that. You've mentioned Raheem Sterling previously. Um, what players in this current crop of uh, the squad do you know? Who do you know well? Who have you spoken to? Um, and uh, what can you maybe learn from them? I spoke to Eddie Nketiah when he was called up in the last camp and he yeah. said he wanted to go straight over to Harry Kane and pick his brains for stuff. Is there anyone yeah. whose brains you want to pick? Um, not really. I think I'll just try and talk to as many people as I can. Obviously, I'm new, so try and get settled quick. I know the uh, City boys, Walks, Jack and Phil and stuff. Rico, I've played with him for, for ages. And then the Chelsea boys as well, so yeah. Well, have you chatted with Rico, the, the fact that you've both kind of come up from the under-21s? You've obviously been in and around yeah. um, St George's Park. What, what conversations have you had? Um, after the game, he messaged me asking if I got the same message. And I was like, yeah. So we was both happy, to be fair, that we was going to the first camp together. Because, you know, if you have a friend there, it's always that bit nicer and stuff. So yeah, we're just both, both buzzing. And, uh, just finally, you know, we, we talk about it a lot. It's yeah. eight months till, you know, a major European championship. I'm sure you would love to be on the final squad sheet. Yeah. Who do you see as your major competition for you to get into the squad? Yeah, I'd love to go to uh, the Euros, but i just got to play well at club level first. And all the attackers are amazing players, so there's a lot of competition. But hopefully I can, I can just um, show show what I can do. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, Dan, next. Cool. Grab the mic through then. Yeah. Cole, how, how did Mauricio persuade you to join Chelsea? Do you remember your first conversation with him? Uh, yeah, I spoke to him before I went once, and it was good good phone call. So yeah, he, um, so I decided to go there. Uh, are you conscious that he's got? A incredible record at producing players for England. I mean, just in this squad, obviously Harry, Kieran Trippier, Carl Walker, all at Spurs came through, and then there are others like Deli Alley in, in the past. Are you kind of aware of, of that record? Yeah, a lot of people have told me how he is with young players and stuff, and ever since I went to Chelsea, I can see it. So I'm enjoying working with him and excited to carry on working with him. What do you feel he's kind of specifically done for your game? Uh, I think he's given me the confidence and the the license to, to go where I want on the pitch, where I feel, use my strengths. So yeah, I'm just grateful for it. Well, do you have an idea where you see your best position, kind of long term? Um, I like to play in all the positions. To be fair, <laughs> false nine, right, um, middle. So wherever he puts me, I'm I'm happy to play there. There's, there's always a lot of talk about Chelsea signing players and at the moment there's a lot of speculation about them signing a striker. I mean, do, do you think you know, you could maybe save them a, a £100 million pounds by, by doing that role? I don't know. Well, I'm not a natural striker, so maybe not. But we'll see what happens in January. And, and finally, what did you pick up from, from playing with Erling Haaland at the City? I mean, since you've been playing the false nine, have you taken anything from his game? Uh just a movement in the box I've tried to look at, but I don't think anyone can, can copy Erlen, to be honest. But yeah, I just looked at his movement and how he gets the chances. Yeah, that's all I've looked at. Thanks, Dan. John Murray? Cool. Can you just take us back to um, that, that period at the end of August, start of September, when the move happened? 
having yeah. having started matches this season for Manchester City and scored big goals for them, <coughs> how quickly did it all happen, and and how did it happen? Um, it happened fast, to be fair. I spoke to um, someone at Chelsea and stuff, and I was speaking to my dad, but I, like I really didn't know what to do. It was just I was just thinking about it for a couple of days, like nine of every minute of the day. But then I just thought for my career and stuff, I just thought I had to try and go and get regular game time. And yeah, seems like a, a massive decision when you when you're choosing Manchester City and everything that that you had there. Yeah. And making the move to London, you know, totally different, yeah? Yeah, it was a big move for me. I've never been out of Manchester. Not even been on loan or anything like that. So to move down there on my own was a big thing. And when I first went down there, it was difficult. It's like staying in the hotel and stuff. But yeah, I've now I've uh, settled in. Well, I've settled in more and, and yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. And just compare working with Pep Guardiola to working with Maurizio Pochettino? I don't know. <laughs> next question. <laughs> <laughs> Nat, do you have next? Hello. Hi. Congrats. Thank you. Um, there was a lot of chat, obviously, when you left City that a young player who was doing so well would leave a manager like Guardiola. Do you feel now, sitting here, after the weeks you've been having for Chelsea and, and now this call-up, that you are vindicated in that decision, that it has all been justified? Um, obviously, you know what, how good of a manager Pep is and stuff, and he gave me the opportunity and the platform to like, kick-start my career, so obviously I'll always be grateful, grateful to him. Who knows what would have happened if I would have stayed, maybe I would have played more, maybe... Maybe not, but I think the decision that I made to go to Chelsea now is that so far is is paying off. So yeah. Um, do you feel like they did enough to to make you believe that they wanted you to stay, or did you feel even at this young age that you were absolutely convinced that your future lay elsewhere? Like I said, it was a really tough decision. I didn't didn't know what I was going to do. But you know the competition that's there, the players that are there, the players that he was going to try and sign. So yeah, I just I weren't sure. In the madness of that game on Sunday, which was just brilliant to watch yeah. and must have been amazing to play in, Raheem Sterling was brilliant and yeah. could have you know been pushing you all the way for man of the match. Um, playing alongside him, how is that helping your game? And are you surprised not to see him here? Yeah, obviously he's a great player. Top player has been brilliant this season for us, and playing with him, I've knew him for a while, so I think we have like natural chemistry and stuff. So I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Go back for one more from Gary. Just on the mo move, and you've answered that brilliantly, di very diplomatically. Well done, um, <laughs> because it's very hard when you're being asked about clubs yeah. you've left and clubs you've gone to when the manager's been so influential. But was playing for England in this Euros a big drive for you? Getting regular starts is that. Was that part of the incentive for the move to represent the senior team as soon as possible? I don't think it was a big, big part of it, to be honest. I wasn't even thinking about an England call up when I first went to Chelsea. I just wanted to play more games, like have an opportunity to, more of an opportunity to prove it. And yeah, getting called up here is just a bonus. It has been an incredible few months for you, the European yeah. Championships, the amazing cups that you yeah. played in Europe and to, to now with Chelsea. Um, but how are you finding, you talked about it a little bit earlier, the big plan that Gareth Southgate was such a part of was to get the youth teams winning trophies and yeah. to get the pathway and to get the players turning up and finding it all so familiar. So you are the actual type, the, the blueprint of what they wanted to come through. Yeah. How have you found returning to this senior team? Do you feel less daunted by the fact you're coming up with a teammate and everything's practically the same as it was for you as you came through your youth career to now? I think it's a big step from the, from the youth um, teams in terms of players and stuff that are here. But yeah, it's, it's easier because to try and do the same thing all the way through the age groups. So yeah, it has helped that it's similar, but it is, it is different, yeah. The last question is section from the back. Hi, Paul. Um, Hi. 
So obviously everyone asked what was going through your mind during the penalty on that yeah. day against, against City. But obviously after the, when you celebrated, you, you did a very now almost iconic stroke celebration. I just want to know what was going through your mind with that and why did you decide to just go with a simple shrug? I've spent 15 years at the club. I can't really go and celebrate how I would celebrate if you scored a 95th minute equaliser because it's just disrespectful. But yeah, so I just, I don't know, decided to do a stroke. I don't know why, I just, just did it. <laughs>